Hey everyone, how's it going? Before we get started, we just want to say, we're not making this video to throw shade at Sony. As people who've played the PS1, 2, 3, 4, and have already reserved the PS5, we're just taking a critical look at a company that's been dropping the ball recently. So let's do it. Oh, and if you like our videos, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you never miss a beat. Is it just us, or does it seem like Sony is having a really rough week? And month, if we're being honest. There have been a lot of signs recently. And while we don't want to worry about Sony, especially since all the data points to the PS5 once again destroying the competition, we are a bit concerned. For the sake of the industry, we just hope that the PS5 will follow in the footsteps of the PS2 and PS4, which both did great right from the start. Or at the very least in the footsteps of the PS3, which had a so-so beginning but then managed to redeem itself and really excel. We can all agree, more or less, that info about the PS5 was really slow to come out. Sony kept waiting for their competition to make the first move so that they could come up with a counterattack. We're fine with them being strategic, but what we're not okay with is how Jim Ryan said that Sony believed in the new generation, which is why PS5 exclusives would only ever be PS5 exclusives. And that's why you should buy their new console. Makes sense, right? After all, these games are being created for next-gen consoles. But then he retracted his statement and said that actually, some of these titles would be available on the PS4. And this bothered us because it felt like Sony was being a sneaky politician, telling us something one day and then something completely different the next. Plus, it was kind of shitty that people gave Xbox such a hard time for making Halo Infinite cross-generational, when Sony ended up doing the exact same thing with Spider-Man Miles Morales and Horizon Forbidden West. We just hope that Jim Ryan doesn't go back on everything he said, including that the PS4 community will still be very important for years to come. And don't worry, we're not letting Xbox CEO Phil Spencer off the hook either. First, he criticized generational exclusives in July, saying that Xbox's next-gen games would be available on the Series X and Xbox One, only to then backpedal and say this was no longer the case. They're still going to make Halo Infinite available on both consoles, even after it was announced that it'll be delayed. But as far as we know, all the titles released in 2021, like Forza, State of Decay 3, and Fable will be next-gen exclusives. We think they made this announcement after realizing they had no exclusives to launch with the Series X. After all, why would you buy a next-gen console if it had zero special titles? You're not going to drop $4.99 as soon as a console launches, just to wait around for 6 to 8 months to get an exclusive title. Phil's speech was pretty convincing, but we wouldn't be surprised if they just avoided talking about next-gen games altogether. One, because they don't have any to talk about right now, and two, they know that people's money is spread thin due to the pandemic, and they may not have the cash to spend on next-gen titles right now. But back to Sony. They've been talking about the magic of the SSD for ages now, saying how games will take up less space thanks to SSDs, because unlike HDDs, there wouldn't be duplicate files. But here's the thing. They've already confirmed that Demon's Souls will need at least 66 gigabytes of space, and Spider-Man Miles Morales will need at least 55 gigabytes, and then another 50 gigabytes if you also download the remastered version of Spider-Man, which by the way is 9 gigabytes bigger than the PS4 version of the game. And sure, we expected the games to be big, since they're going to have better graphics and so on, but we're a little salty over the fact that we're gonna have to buy external hard drives despite the so-called magical powers of the SSD to save space, if we want to indulge in all the upcoming PS5 titles. Mm -hmm. We're also concerned about backwards compatibility, and we're sure we're not alone. Jim Ryan said that 99% of PS4 games will be playable on the PS5, but if this is the case, then why haven't they talked about it at any of the live events recently or media interviews? To be honest, we're a little suspicious. Because really, how can we trust a man whose last name sounds more like a first name? Also, to hell 
with backwards compatibility if it ends up being like Spider-Man, aka where we have to pay to get a PS5 version, even if we already have it for the PS4, and we can't transfer any of our data between the two consoles. No thank you, and let's be honest, if this is happening to Spider-Man, which is a PlayStation Studio exclusive, what's gonna happen to third-party games? We really hope they'll address this concern soon. It seems like the westernization of Sony has killed many of the reasons why fans fell in love with the console to begin with. We're not huge fans of their new tactics or how far they've strayed from the OG PlayStation philosophy. For example, when Jim Ryan recently criticized Xbox by saying its Game Pass isn't sustainable and that the Xbox Series S wasn't going to succeed, it left a bad taste in our mouths. Shouldn't he just focus on his own company rather than throwing shade at the competition? Plus, he should be really worried now that Microsoft's purchase of Bethesda has gone public. Because Xbox is going to have access to exclusives that will give Sony a run for their money. Also, what the hell happened with the pre-sale? Back in August, Eric LaPelle, head of marketing for PlayStation Worldwide, literally said, I think it's safe to say that we will let you know when pre-bookings will happen. It will not happen with a minute's notice. At some point, we will know when you can reserve a PS5, so please don't feel like you have to go out for a run. And then boom! Absolute chaos ensued when the pre-sale happened without any notice. Come on Sony, you can do better than this. And finally, just a word of advice before you buy the digital edition of the PS5. We know that it's cheaper than the standard edition, but by paying a bit more in the beginning, you could be saving a lot in the long term. We were looking at digital versus physical copies of the game, and as it turns out, the digital versions, at least in Europe, are all more expensive than the physical versions by at least 10 euros or more. Seriously though, that's so stupid. <sighs> okay, we've got everything off our chest and now we're imagining what it would be like if Sony had done things differently and better. This video wouldn't exist, we'd be praising them endlessly, and we wouldn't be so damn confused. The question now is, will they be able to clean up their mistakes and chart a brighter future for the PS5? Will the PS5 be worth all this chaos? Will we be rewarded with some unexpected, but great, surprises and gains? What do you think? Have Sony and Xbox done a good job thus far? Will you be buying either console? Let us know in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching and see you next time.